Hey, how is everybody doing? What's up? What's up? What is going on? How's it going today? I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and welcome to the dark side of the room. Now, I got some good stuff to talk to you guys about today. Now, last week, I think it was, <clears throat> we talked about um, elitism and fear of being the beginning, uh, the beginners and all that stuff. And I'm going to expand on that today. Um, but before we do any of that stuff, of course, what are we going to do? We are going to but da -da -da, do all of our announcements and all that stuff. Now, there's been rumors around here of a puppet going around saying some stuff and being around there. So we're going to talk to you about that for a little bit. But I want you guys to join the conversation and I want to say hello and what's up to everybody. I'm just making sure that, oh, look at that. Thank you so much. I got a new, looks like a new uh, new follower. Uh, yeah, let me see if this is actually working. I've been, yeah, there we go. That's future something instinct. Let me check what's in here. Checking what's in here. Um. Yeah, computer is being a little weird today, but that's all right. Um, we're going there. We're going there. And yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, that's Lily Red Wolf. And uh, go with him. I want to say what's up to that person that is out there. I am really happy that you're here with us. And of course, we are going live on on YouTube right now as well. So I've been doing this double this double broadcast thing, um, seeing what that's like. I may stop. I haven't decided yet. Primarily, um, yeah, primarily, I've been doing this double broadcasting thing um, to try and expand the audience and things like that. And I, it might be working. It might not be working, but we'll see. Either way, thank all of you for showing up. Um, that means a lot to me like a whole lot to me that you guys are here and that you guys are showing up um we've got a lot of good stuff coming down for you right now and what i would really like for you to do is to join the conversation and how can you do that well that's easy you can pull up your email and you can type in back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-g-e-c-k -E -E at gmail dot com you can also reach out to us on twitter if you must um <laughs> i do check the twitters and all that stuff um at back in the deck instagram back in the deck and now tiktok at bid p that's b-i-d p-y i would have normally had my regular voice up and all that stuff but it didn't quite work out the way that i wanted it to like a lot of things in life so i appreciate all of that now if you guys are so inclined to help us out and keep the doors open and i would really appreciate it if you did that head on over to patreon that's right we got a patreon.com slash bid underscore p it really helps uh we have so many different tiers um starting from one dollar going all the way up to a hundred dollars a month um it's some really good stuff on here this is where i upload most of the archive this is where we're doing skits and stuff with said puppet that people have been talking about um this is where we give our lessons as to how to play games and things like that so um not to mention all of the prizes you know we got so many incentives for people to join us on patreon anything from miniatures to dice rollers um to oh my god um well we have like little masks okay wearable masks and a whole bunch of stuff with like polls and one-on-one -on -one lessons with me that's a whole lot of stuff that we're giving you um and it starts at a dollar one dollar i think I, I i think i give you um at least as much value as a bag of cheetos a month let, let's just let, let's hope that that's that's what you guys get out of it i want to say what's up to again np city um that's np city on all the mediums all right that's hey what's going on um hey dame red bento it's good to it's good to see you back i'm happy that you showed up today 
um yeah to our people over on youtube i'm saying hello because i'm in all of the chats that's right all of the chats and um i've just said hello to everyone and today we actually have a guest and we may have a guest coming in earlier um or coming in later rather and right now of course i'm doing the thing that i normally do letting people know that we're here but i want to say what is going on to our special guest let me see if i can get the name right again jenny mansky i am terrible with names i, I am just this is horrible this is really horrible uh, you want me to give it yeah, to you again? yeah yeah what's up tell the people who you are <laughs> Hi, it's me again. It's Jenny. Uh, last name is Madisak. I know it's a very weird last name. So yeah. blame Eastern Europe. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're probably Madisak that I keep forgetting your last name. That's all I'm saying. Ah, uh -huh. uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, tell the people about yourself. Where are you from? What you do? What um, is your well, nerd thing? A lot of nerd things. Um, <laughs> well, um, I uh, was on. I, was it last week? I feel like it was a while ago, or not that long ago. My time, I swear time is a fallacy at this point in my life, but <laughs> um, I am a bit of a dabbler in kind of some things nerdy, um, I'm a bit of a D&D &D gamer, um, and just kind of dabble in a lot of different nerdums. Um, I am also a big uh, K-pop stan. <laughs> no one find me on K-pop Twitter, though, because K-pop Twitter is a cesspool of scum and villainy. You don't find <laughs> me over there because it is just dark and evil place. Um, but I Is do there anywhere on Twitter that isn't? I mean, really? Mm, good point. There really is not. It's a very good point. But um, I do host a K-pop uh, podcast, although we are currently on hiatus, but we are coming back soon. I promise we are coming back very, very soon um, as we're getting wrapping up towards the end of the year here as we're definitely uh, getting a bunch of really, really good music coming out of Korea right now um that i host with my good friend miss jenny liano called the newness podcast uh you can find us over on the metropolis collective over on facebook or you can listen to us over on soundcloud uh just search for the newness podcast uh you can see our backlog of catalog our back catalog of uh podcast episodes or you can follow us over on twitter and instagram just search for newness underscore podcast and check us out like i said we're just two girls nerding out over k-pop and literally it's not just bts it's the whole gamut of k-pop because there's much awesome. much more than bts well yeah that's like man i'm such an american rock stan i do <laughs> love me that panic at the disco yeah yeah that's that that's the whole thing that's the <laughs> only american rock band there is that is all there right. is there is nothing mm -hmm. but panic at the Disco. yeah no that's not the way it goes yeah um yeah exactly you know yeah i mean seriously that's a thing so yeah wow we did the announcements and all that stuff so that is cool um i'm gonna give a fair warning um this topic is kind of big and um ah uh, there we go you know i'm so going to have to learn how to do that thing my mentor does because he is so good at it but i'm not um uh, <laughs> he knows how to talk about stuff in just enough time to say yeah we're here and i'm gonna end my announcements at the same time as the music but <laughs> what do i look like a professional um so um if you guys got the announcements and been like hey you know uh what that seems like a pretty cool topic um one of the things oh that's interesting uh youtube is saying hey my thing is over and i'm like i don't believe you um but again, over over the big old um, the big old topic of expertise and stuff that I've been getting um, or going through rather when it comes to teaching new players, I get a whole lot of complications or people that are afraid of stuff and all that jazz, and I start to wonder. Hang on um um what is it that um what is it that like what is at the core of what makes learning difficult especially with learning new things um and it hit me um the biggest thing that stands in people's way is a sense of embarrassment 
um, and a fear of being the new person. And that is one of the things that I wanted to talk about with people today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, really a big thing where, um, every time I try and talk to someone about D or, um, what is the other stuff that I like to, um, D and D or board games or tabletop miniatures games, you know, uh, last week we talked about, um, trying not to make this stuff a lifestyle as it were, right? And, um, ooh, drop my mouse. <laughs> I am Captain Organized over here. That is, that is what I am. And now, we talked about the difference between keeping hobbies, hobbies, and lifestyles, lifestyles, right? Yeah, so. Ah, mm -hmm. ah such a wonderful conversationist. Uh, <laughs> but, it's like a conversation we had last week about that. Yeah, so. But today, um... I started thinking about how that impacts the efficacy of learning and the, um, what is the term I'm looking for? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, how these things kind of scare off new players, especially people that have a long history of anxiety, especially anxiety about being the new guy. You know, the new guy, the new kid in town, the Johnny come lately. <clears throat> I listen to white guy music, um, <laughs> you know, so um, and I reached out to quite a few people today to talk about this subject, to be like, all right, so what do we got? Um, how can we do this? Like, what are some of the things that is the sound I've been waiting for? Um, how can we talk about this stuff? And in a nutshell, um, what are some of the, um, some of the barriers, as it were, um, that people have internally when it comes to those new things, you know, when it comes to learning those new things. And I get a lot because one of the biggest things that I have been, um, one of the things that I've been talking about, um, is when I was working at a game store years and years and years ago, um, we're talking 2002, my supervisor, um, labeled himself as an elitist. Okay. That is a really big thing. Like he loved, um, playing in tournaments he loved mastery of things and as a lot of you guys know i was talking with the viking a couple of days ago and he talks a lot about mastery and how people um love getting great at stuff and feeling like they've gotten great at stuff as you will and um i did everything i could to be empathetic but one thing just kept getting in my way and that is some of the barriers that I've hit as a new guy, be it the new guy in town or new to a hobby or a new vocation. Um, now, I want to put this out right there. I do not have the same level of, um, I don't have the same level of new guy reticence. Um, Reticence. Okay. I'm not afraid of not knowing things. I'm not afraid of being looked at like I'm not an expert at something. Um, not because I have that much self confidence, but because I've been fighting my whole life about that. And I'm just good at the fight. You know, when people are like, oh my gosh, you don't even know this. I'm like, where would I have learned that? Where did you learn it? Did you come out of the womb with an intrinsic knowledge of D and D bonus materials? Like, did, um, is that something that you got when you know in your kindergarten class when everyone else was learning the ABCs and the fact that crayons taste like crayons? I guess you were learning ways to be um to be 
interdimensional traps like being shoved into a bag of holding yeah that that that's what your life is hail to you you know that's what i sound like and that's that's the way i i approach these people um but there is a lot of embarrassment for not knowing things and i come across this a lot as a teacher um joining us also um from the chat attack our other guest with our round table thing today as soon as he comes back will be um <laughs> alan last name i'm not even going to start to start to pronounce i'm really not but um jenny when you were mm -hmm. you know when you're learning new stuff and i know you've got you got yourself a mayan um <laughs> who kind of has um kind of has a different realm of experience that as you mm -hmm. do uh, what are some of the hurdles that you find in yourself when it comes to learning things that he might want to show you? I would ask about him, but I don't want you putting all his stuff out there on front street. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so yeah, what are some of the, um, um, what are some of the hurdles that you find when it comes to being the new person in town? Some of the things that you might be afraid of? Well, I think the the biggest hurdle for me is just like the fact of just trying to, not trying to sound stupid, because um, mm -hmm. you know there's this level of just like not wanting to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, or just you know trying to fumble over your words or just you know making a mistake. You know you kind of want to go in and you want to make a really good impression when you first uh, like for example when you're playing D and D and you're playing with a new group of people you kind of want to go in and you want to you know show that you do know the material and you know what you're doing but sometimes you don't like especially if it's like <laughs> a new if it's a new playbook or you know especially if it's a new edition i mean if you haven't play tested it you don't know how the like inter intricacies of the edition works i remember that happening when fifth edition came out i was just kind of sitting here like okay i don't know what the new you know uh details all of this are I have to play a couple you know sessions just before I kind of understand the you know ins and outs of it because it was vastly different than edition fourth edition vastly vastly different than fourth edition but uh, and that's like I think my biggest well, hurdle only is difference sounding stupid. you know the only difference between fourth and fifth in all honesty is fourth edition was a game and fifth edition is easier to play learn enjoy yes. have fun with all that stuff so that's that i agree with <laughs> that i very much agree with <laughs> fifth edition kind of went back to its like traditional role playing which i think i think they're doing back to more traditional role playing oh, so well i'm just being salty it, it's just, <laughs> there's a lot of people that like fourth edition and no I'm my, it, my, my brother's one of them he really really like fourth edition because that's what he got into D D with so i mean he's he's definitely a fourth edition stand but i i let him i let him have it so he had really good times with fourth edition but um yeah i just that's my biggest thing because i especially somebody who oh come really comes off as very very smart mm -hmm. to people so like i just i guess it kind of gets into my head that like i need to portray myself as very very smart um or not just portray but like you know not say something dumb. And so when I do, or if I make a mistake, like I feel really embarrassed and really stupid. And like, it's just kind of this kind of weighs in my back of my head. Cause like, I'm the kind of person who if I make a mistake, I dwell on that mistake mm -hmm. for the longest time, even if it's something really, really minor. I'm that's just the kind of thing my brain will kind of, you know, pick on. And so for me, I, it's the one thing like, I know I shouldn't be doing, but that's again, something my brain does and I should try to train myself out of it but again trying to again train myself out of it but okay that's my biggest hurdle and like and I see that happen in other fandoms and stuff too that I've gotten myself into especially uh getting into k-pop and stuff because I mean that's a whole vast Trevor trove once you're starting to get into multiple groups and starting to learn names and stuff too I mean I'm still learning names and uh intricacies of different groups and stuff especially older groups and then you know still especially because I mean I'm dealing with foreign names so it's not you know names that I'm very common with so it's understanding that those intricacies and stuff too so okay well one of the things that um that you brought up there is the looking dumb and when it comes to that whole I'm afraid of looking dumb thing that is something that I've done um 
Uh, I did a little bit of research today um, by asking the question, what is so bad about looking dumb? And one of the things that the person I talked to brought up was generally as people like women, LGBTQ+, trans, um, um, color of skin, country of origin, economic background, um, a lot of these things are the first barrier to entry. And I know in the world that we live in on a lot of levels, um, there seems to be this um, thought, if you will, that on those levels, um, on those levels, if you are not part of the standard, as you will, um, what is the term I'm looking for? The standard demographic for these things, um, such as like in role playing, um, middle class white guy, in um, in say battle rapping, um, a hardened person from the hood. If you're not part of the standard demographic, it seems like there's already um, um and a built-in reason that you don't belong, and there is a habit that I've seen with a lot of loud gatekeepers of finding a reason to not welcome the new person who may not be part of either the new demographic or maybe part of the old demographic or even a new addition to the click or the comfort zone of a lot of the new players and um, or a lot of the new the new person that's in because we're not just talking D D, we're talking comics and movies and a whole bunch of other stuff so um now we have a new guest in here as well so what are your guys's thoughts on um on that particular uh, on that particular thing just um the fear of the new person um going in with the common parlance of I'm probably not welcomed here because I wasn't born here type thing. Um, do you guys find that that is a standard or a rather pervasive type mindset with already established groups or, or organizations as it were? Hmm. Uh, probably it's probably the biggest uh, barrier entry when it actually comes to people joining or doing anything. Because I remember, because uh, I play Magic the Gathering. I haven't played it in years because I don't have a community as much as I did when I was in college. But I played the hell out of that game when I Not was in college. Not to mention you don't have a house to mortgage to buy the new sets of cards. <laughs> oh, we used to, every single day when we were in college, we used to buy like the huge decks. It was awesome. I had the Magic Touch. Every time we'd buy it, I'd grab it and we'd get like some rare card out of there. I don't know how it worked, but uh, I still have a lot of those cards. I would If someone came to me today, hey, you want to play? Sure. But I'll never forget the very first time I ever tried to build a deck. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't. And I was terrified because it's like everyone around me at least had like two or three years under their belt. Me, I was just like, that card looks kind of cool. I like the color red and just started mixing and matching. But luckily, I had enough people around me that like, no, no, that's not how you do this. It's not how you do that. And they were able to walk through. But I remember just kind of watching them play and going, I do not understand a single thing that I'm looking at. And I don't think I'm ever going to understand it. So it's like, why? You know why try just you know sit and observe because it's like if you try and you end up failing you might look like a fool nobody really wants to look dumb in front of a group of people like that's the biggest fear where all of you are like i'd rather just you know observe than actively participate well see that is actually what i want to explore ah oh, where's my cursor that is what i want to explore um with today's episode it's known that nobody wants to feel stupid Nobody, you know, everyone is afraid of looking like they're stupid, looking like they don't know what they're doing, looking like they're new. And I want to dive into the whys, because one of my biggest things is, what are you actually afraid of? What do you think is going to happen? You think that if you don't know that, that say, a great axe does 1d12 damage when you swing it double hand, you're going to spontaneously burst into flames? <laughs> like, like, do you think your children are going to die or the D&D &D police are going to kidnap your grandmother saying you have to solve the tomb of horrors in order to get your family back? I mean, what is the actual fear of being the outsider? And I want to talk to you guys about it because someone that I talked to today gave me an answer. But 
as much as it's my show, I don't really want to dominate the conversation, if you will. <laughs> but it's my show. No, seriously. Uh, so, so what do you? Yeah. So, talk to us, Jenny. Talk to us. Um, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, look at me for being an outsider, especially in something like K-pop. We I mean, I'm like, I'm a white chick. I mean, that's like the furthest thing that people to think that would be into K-pop, but especially as an older fan of it, you think somebody should be like, you know, in their teens listening to this kind of shit but i am such a big fanatic of it and uh you know and like i'm definitely even an outsider of what people think it should be and i've kind of grown into this whole thing you know realizing that like i don't care what other people think about it but it took me a while to get to that point because i first kind of when i was getting into it was just like okay i'm kind of keeping this off in a way to myself because I just kind of don't want people to realize like I'm kind of getting back into boy bands again. It was kind of a weird feeling when I was getting back into it. As no, my you don't want them stopping you on the streets, pointing, going, oh, 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 Rio. <laughs> no. God, just back so much. <laughs> and we just triggered Alan. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, as, as my boyfriend literally just like tagged me in a, like a joke today on on Facebook, which I actually kind of appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but um, because you never do grow out of your boy band phase ever, really. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, but it really helped when I started. Shows like, you. Actually... My favorite boy band is the Bangles. Thank you. So well, hey, and, and everyone under fifty, the who. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a dated joke. I'm old, okay? I can't help when my parents had so. Anyway, you were saying? <laughs> but I mean, I, it helps that like I when I started kind of getting into it, I started talking and get, actually getting more involved in, you know, discovering other things and actually surprisingly through Twitter and weirdly through Reddit, um I started finding people who were similarly of my age and my demographic. And even outside my demographic, you know, other races, other ethnicities, other uh, orientations, you know, really wide variety of people. And that's when I started feeling very, very, you know, inclusive into this. I'm like, and I was like, okay, you know what, screw it. Like, everybody can be into this. It's fine. And that's, I think, what started really changing my mindset about, you know, being more open about it and that's kind of what opened it to be me feeling like okay I can be more open about it and being a little bit more casual in the conversation about it and I think it's kind of helped me in other things too in my life because it's like okay it doesn't really matter you know again it shouldn't really matter like who you are what you look like your sexual orientation none of that because you're who you are and you should be doing what you like and it doesn't matter what that is but, you know, there's there's this weird stigma, you know, no matter what it is, because everything's kind of pigeonholed into these different categories that like, oh, because you're, you know, this, you're a white guy, you know, you're a white guy, you should like sports or, you know, you should, um, you know, like a neck beard should like, you know, nerdy shit or like, you know, anything kind of stuff like the, the basis, you know, basic basis of like stereotypes. I only have and a modicum of understanding of being stereotyped. Uh, just, just a little bit, not not just a, a mo lot. Just a little bit. <laughs> no, I can't play basketball well. Um, <laughs> so, um, what are you thinking, Alan? Well, I, I'm sorry. Did you finish your point there? I, no, um... I mean that's basically <laughs> okay. my point. My point is like, is like basically fuck these stereotypes because the stereotypes are stupid mm -hmm. at this point. And that's I think what a, bit, a lot of it is is kind of based upon those things. And you know, especially me as a woman, in a lot of nerdy stuff, especially you know talking about nerdy stuff. And there's a lot of, well, I will say this: there are a lot of men out there who are saying, "Well, you're a girl. You shouldn't be talking about this stuff. It should be left to the men." It's like, um, I have an opinion too. Like I can talk about this stuff. I can probably talk to your ear about all this stuff, and probably start sound a lot more smarter than you <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i i totally get what you're saying but i'm gonna mute you real quick so alan and i can talk because the men need to talk real quick so alan <laughs> i am not hey! not wrote me into this this isn't like the 60s i ain't doing this <laughs> hey! well no i'm just saying we were talking about our our roe v wade and no i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm totally kidding um you know again jokes can't Jokes. swear on his <laughs> Twitch channel, but he's bringing up an anti-abortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a thing. Just um, what I will say, though, is send all emails to backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's okay. So, so, um, but, but yeah. So 
real talk though um i brought up this stuff today because the question really hit me um i've talked to people i hear a lot of older gamers say i don't deal with beginners i don't like dealing with people who don't already know what they're doing and i'm like well i'm not gonna pull the classist card i'm not gonna pull the racist card but it got me thinking one major question and that is um is the pervasiveness of elitist culture damaging to the culture that it belongs to? See, told you guys we're going to get big on this today. This is, this is the stuff. Fun and games. Fun and games is fun. But yeah, um, because I'm noticing that the barrier to entry for a lot of things involving people um, tends to be unless you are um, a fifth degree black belt then you have no place in this conversation. And I start to ask um, if everyone is closing the door to new people, where does the new person go? Like, I'm not gonna get around to the question of what is the end game of gatekeepers, okay? Because their end game is, I wanna keep it all for myself. And then it's gonna die because they're short-sighted and every business, be it, Every piece of nerd culture from comics and music to um, miniature painting and D&D &D and LARPing and furries, all are businesses that need a customer base. So if there's no community, there's no customers. Um, but when the communities try and keep each other out with this pushing back of the goalpost, um, what do we do about the idea of you're only welcomed around here if you're an expert? The easy answer is, well, to find a new community. And it's like, you know, that's like finding a job. I need someone mm -hmm. who's 25 years old and has eight years experience um, doing this. And if they can't do it, they should just find a new place to apply for, you know. And that, that's what a lot of the stuff is looking at toward me. But someone today brought up that being, um, um, being a woman or a person of color or LGBTQ or even on the neurodivergent spectrum, um, there's a lot of behavior that appears to be, seems, and oftentimes is subtle actions to push people away. Okay. So, um, I was told a story today by someone. I keep all of my, I keep all of my sources anonymous because I want to make sure people talk to me about how they played a female fighter in D and D at a table that they'd never played at before. And one of the players took that character and shoved it into a bag of holding with the, if you're smart enough, you can find your way out. And the DM allowed it. And that got me thinking like, how many goalposts get pushed back to say that a person isn't qualified? Um, so the consequence of being forced out or not belonging, I understand. I, I can definitely understand. Um, but I'm wondering if that's the only thing to be afraid of um, when it comes to elitism, get good culture, is the fear of not measuring up, a fear of ridicule. I know when I was growing up, it was a fear of physical danger, but we live in an internet culture where even if we want to, we can't slap somebody across the mouth. Um, so what would, like we've, we've used words like embarrassing and not belonging, but my question is with the fears, what are the core fears? Like what are we afraid um, will happen if we don't fit? That's, that's my question. Alan, <laughs> you, you brought up, you probably brought up the most hated, my most hated phrase in all of media is get good. <laughs> because it's, it started off from Dark Souls and I'll blame that community for that. Because it's not a situation of I'm trying to help you. It's, it's a criticism that you're asking for help. It's like you're being ridiculed for either saying you don't like it because of difficulty or you're even asking for help. And as opposed to getting any sort of like actual criticism, you just get this like, you know, Call of Duty bro, get good uh, thing in, in your chat box. And it's like, that does, that's not helpful. That's not in any way, shape or form going to do that. And in other cases, you're just going to give up because it's like, if you don't have any sort of guidance, 
any sort of you won't be able to necessarily make any skill because you're going to keep making mistakes without any sort of idea or any set path. So there's always going to be the ostracizing for either being made fun of, but it's also a situation of if you don't have the right guidance, if you're a new person in there, like for instance, again, bring back to me playing magic. If I didn't have the right people around, I would have never played it and grew to love it because there would have been no one to show me. So when you walk into and being the new guy, you're like, well, if no one shows me, how can I ever get better? Okay. And most of the time people will just give up and go on to something maybe that's a little bit easier or they'll just hope the next community will accept them more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, growing up where I grew up, there is a level of clowning culture. Um, oh, of course. And it, it's it's actually interesting because I notice with a lot of insular things, there is that matter of, um, um, well, when I was first learning to be a musician, I would have my bass guitar with me because I practiced all the time. I was like Swiss Gar from Metalocalypse. And, um, you know, I mean, I had my bass with me on the bus or walking down the street or in the hot tub. And I would get like old black men looking at me going, what you know about playing bass? Can you do Jane Brown? Can you do this one thing that's in my head that tells me uh, if you can't do this super complicated thing, then you shouldn't just pick up the thing at all. You don't, you don't know what you're doing, you know? Um, and I'm like, okay, old man, I may not know how to play like James Jamerson, but I'm learning. And one day I will. And until then, show me what you can do. Oh man. You know, but um, I also come from a culture of violence and saying things like that to old black dudes might get you knifed. So I got a few I got a few stitches when I was growing up. But um, but, you know, like I said, my dangers, my, my fears were always um, were always physical danger because I grew up pre Internet. Um, but what are what are your thoughts on the things that you're actually afraid of when it comes to that kind of thing, Jenny? I mean, I never really had, thankfully, I've never had any instances where I've had like violence, thankfully thrown at me. Although, you know, again, just being a woman, like there, you do see that on the internet, just like, oh, you're a dumb woman. Like you shouldn't be in this. Oh yeah. I was about to say that the internet is not even known for, I mean, it's so progressive. <laughs> there's, there's no sexist <laughs> talk of, 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 you know, seriously, like a woman gets into anything on the internet and they're welcomed with open arms and respect. I can't even say that. Oh my God, can my eyes go further in the back of my head? Really? I don't know, let's find out. So find out more going. Oh. No, no, I, I, I want to, I just, I can't even think them out loud without laughing. Cause yeah, the internet sucks for women. Okay, and I don't care where you were born as a woman. If you're a white woman, the internet sucks. And if you're any other type of woman, it just gets worse and worse and worse. All right. That's exactly that that's why we that's why I started this company. So uh let's continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is why we talked about this in the first place. <laughs> but yeah, I mean things that thankfully I've never had like violence, but I've had like opportunities. I remember there was a D D session I tried to start playing through Roll 20 that I found and there was a bit of an elitist kind of thing to it because there were some people who had played before together in Roll20. So, like, they had some of this, like, camaraderie between them. So, like, they had this familiarity. And I kind of had this, like, I kind of got, like, felt like shoved to the side eventually to the point that the session finally just kind of fizzled out. Like, the campaign basically fizzled out and just, like, ended, like, in the middle of it. And we just, it never concluded or anything like we were literally in the middle of it and just kind of fizzled and died but like I like and I actually had a like actually engaging storyline going through it and it just literally the session died and so and that for a while like actually kind of turned me off of D&D because it was just like did I do that did I cause it because but it's like it wasn't my fault even though all these people had played with each other before I just kind of joined in because they needed another player and I had experience in Roll20. And so it just kind of like, it definitely turned me off for a while because it just was this whole feeling of like, did I end the session? Like, was it my fault? Like, what did I do wrong when it really wasn't my fault? Okay. Yeah, um, that's, that's very much something um, I know I've experienced personally in the suburbs and a lot of things that I've seen other people go through. Um, Alan. You were in Ooh. Canada. 
and Canada is known for being polite. Are these some of the things that you've come across over your time in your nerd stuff from magic to video games? Um, hell, to your love of birds. Like, you know, um, <laughs> what, what, um, what have been your experiences and your trepidations about being the being the new guy? Uh, uh, we still spoke about a bit in, in the Twitch chat, but I'm a very energetic person. As most people that, are, that personally know me, I can be very energetic, very argumentative. I tend to hold myself <laughs> back a lot. I've and always I'm, had like, really everything <laughs> I've ever interacted with you with for the past like four years. You've been totally non-confrontational with At me. All. <laughs> no, but one of the things that uh, that I would do if I'm meeting a new group, like let's say one of my buddies will bring me over and we're just interacting with new people. I, I'll try my best to be very, very held back because it's like, there are people that will react very differently. And I've had people in my past that react extremely poorly if I start to argue about a particular comic book or particular character in a movie or something. So when when doing that, it's like, I tend to be very uh, closed off because it's like, I don't know how, I don't know what kind of jokes people are going to enjoy. I don't know what kind of, you know, first it's uh, saying that I like the new 52 run of Wonder Woman when it first came out just stopped the entire room of people and looked at me like I was a crazy person. Uh, like, that's no, because that's you hang, good run. That's because you hang out with people who have bad taste because objectively speaking, Wonder Woman and Aquaman were their best runs of the new 52. They had the best yeah. writers and most I even like the Batman run of the, the, the Court of Owls was pretty good. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It looks like we lost your signal here. Let me just, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you can't do that. Either. I could fight now, but it... <laughs> But it is one of those things where it's like, yeah, you have to be, I, for me personally, I have to be very careful because I can get very deep into an argument and sometimes people don't have that patience or stamina. I even had situations where that's happened where it's like people the next day, my buddy's like, yeah, they they cannot stand you. I'm like, oh, that really sucks. So it, it is very one of those things where you have to be not necessarily like put on a different mask, but you have to be, you have to understand what kind of room you're in and people aren't necessarily going to like you kind of coming in and pretending like not necessarily you're part of the group, but like you have to be okay with the fact that it's like they're gonna have to get used to you at first and that's for some people they might not know how to necessarily do that so it might scare them from even ever trying but as far as like a lot of stuff it's mostly just been like how much of me can i be in this group so that's mostly what i've been having to deal with okay all right so now um do you guys mind if we run over my our normal one hour runtime? that's my question do you do you mind yeah sure yeah of course great because now we get Oh man, we've got uh who is it? Uh Neon Arlecchino. Neon Arlecchino. A coffee drink I've never heard of. Um saying that he loved or they loved Earth 2 in the new 52. You know what? That was a pretty good run. But that's a conversation for a different day. Um not Tuesday down by the docks. You gotta be on Patreon for that one. Um, but we get to my favorite part of the show. How do we navigate it? Okay, how do we navigate these things? What are the solutions? Because um, we can sit up here and complain on the internet all day. By internet standards, oh, I should have great grandkids. You cloud, look, at you're just sitting up there all floaty and white and, 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 and you're floating your whiteness over the ghetto. Stop looming over me, you know. Um, but <laughs> I, I've had a little coffee. <laughs> I was um, gonna say old man yelling at chair. <laughs> <laughs> or old man literally yelling at a cloud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um but um I'm all about solutions and I you know, I, I tell people about this channel because we try and find ways around these things. And the first solution that I most definitely have is to understand that we do not live in a just world. Okay. Um there's a lot of things, especially about niche hobbies, be it um, fire spinning, um, cosplay, LARPing, um, um, 16th century stamp collecting, um, you know, comic books. A lot of people out there are garbage. OK, a lot of people are a lot of people are so stuck wanting everything to stay the, the way it was. Um, from when they were happiest in their lives, be it high school or when they were 10, that they're hostile, even violent to others. Those people are garbage, and the only way to take them out is to leave them on the curb. Okay. Um, 
But when it comes to um, a lot of fears, I'm not going to lie. A lot of these fears are very, very substantial. Okay, they're substantial and history has substantiated them. Okay, um, we're going to have a little bit of a moment right now as I get a little honest with y'all. And when I say a little bit honest, like we're going to have, we're going to have a little bit of a moment. Yeah. My music comes back on. As you guys know, I've had four or five month hiatus. I had a death of my family. I had some stuff to deal with. And while I was gone, I found that a phenomenon that had started right before I had to take some time off had become such a regular thing that videos about it were real. I even found out from my mentor in Texas that it was happening to him two or three times um, a month. And that phenomenon is called hate rating. Okay. Um, it's where a bunch of low life Nazi scum are out there on the internet and they fill up the chat with hateful messages and threats and, um, you know, bar reliefs and stuff of like Hitler and, you know, those questions like what's the Jewish solution and all that stuff. And, um, and a lot of the times being an online present, who's a black man, um, there's a risk of me getting doxxed, of me getting swatted, and these are compounded fears, okay? Very compounded fears. Like, if I get swatted, we'll add that together with the ACAB and Black Lives Matter movement, and that'll probably be my last day on this earth. So, that's real fear, all right? Um, and that's, I'm not saying that fear that other people have aren't real, but that's, that's the fear that I'm going through, and these are concerns that I'm really... I'm really keeping into consideration. But when it comes to being the new guy, not being welcomed, being laughed at, being attacked, um, one of the things that keep me going is one, most of these things that gatekeepers do um, is they do everything they can to make people as uncomfortable as possible. Um to make them go away, to say, this is mine, you can't have it. And when it comes to their house, yeah, that's your house too, you yeah, have your house. But when it comes to things like ideas or media platforms or conversations or even fandoms or hobbies, um, that might be that person's game. But if they're outvoted, then evidently it's not theirs, just, just literally by definition. But the thing that keeps me going through this is knowing my personal truth and knowing my lot. Okay. Um, when people try and do the, well, you should be an expert at this because you're a GM. I'm like, <laughs> you tell me one thing, one thing in your life that you know every single thing about and you never make a mistake with. You know, don't expect perfection from me if you're not perfect at anything. But I'm okay with you not being perfect at everything. I'd like the same amount of respect. Now, I can say that as a 44-year-old man who has somewhere to go and who's lost so many friend circles, I could give a crap if I'm exiled one more time, okay? Not all you guys are like that, all right? But um, one of the biggest things that people recommend is if you can't find a group with something, form your own. But when you're forming your own, you have to sell the ideas to the people that you know that may or may not have their own hangups. My solution is to stay patient, know your truth, and live the fun that you're trying to have everyone else to have. But that's me, all right? That's me at 44 with a huge ID gaff attitude um, <clears throat> with most stuff as long as um, physical damage isn't on the line. Um, what do some of you guys, um, what do you two think? We'll start with you, Jenny, um, because you've had to navigate this space relatively recently. Like, what are some of your solutions to getting past that embarrassment and that fear of being a new guy? I mean, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's just, it's seriously, go search out your own group and just go find people who are very similarly, um, kind of in your wheelhouse. I mean, that's literally what I did to kind of find my K-pop friends. I have a huge 
circle of like very close K-pop friends that I had talked to on the daily now that um, we literally fell in, through through Reddit and then into Discord and the rest of this history that we've now been talking for now over two years uh, together. And it's just, uh, and it kind of was through that way. It's just like literally a community coming together saying, hey, we're looking for people who are 25 and older who are into K-pop and the rest is history. And it just kind of grew from there. And yeah, it's just it's that kind of thing. It's just kind of, if you can't find a circle that you don't feel comfortable with, go search out your own because that's out there. I mean, I mean, we talk about the internet being, you know, a cesspool of sky and hump, you know, villainy, but there is some good out there if you are able to kind of wade through that and find the glimmers of hope. So don't laugh at me, Alan. I see you laughing at me. Hey, you <laughs> Star Wars reference. I got the reference. You're right. <laughs> but, you know, I, it, it, it really is like that because I, this really, at the end of the day, like there are just those like little havens that you can find out there and that they are really those beacons of hope and they really can turn around a fandom that you think you don't belong in and really make it something fulfilling oh very cool and um alan um from what i know you've taken a different um a different approach to a lot of this stuff um <laughs> it's like oh man here it comes um no but like you know what are what are some of the things that you've done um and why have they or haven't or why have or haven't they worked in your experience it's weird because like i i agree with the notion of yeah be able to start your own thing up with people you want it's just i can understand how difficult that can be it can be extremely difficult especially if you don't have enough uh, groups around to be able to figure that out so for me it's like a lot of the groups that I kind of ended up joining for instance knowing uh, I work with the chat attack now but years ago five plus years ago I was just a random person commenting in the chat and I had I had no idea what the future was going to be I had no idea they're ever going to sit there and be like hey you want to join this community you want to become a host you want to help run the fucking sorry run the thing in a couple of years like I did not know that could ever I don't think that could ever be a possibility. So I just did what I wanted to do. I, th I showcased that I am around because I want to have fun. I want to talk to people. I want to uh, understand new views, new people, and have just fun discussions. And I kept it at that level. No expectations, just having fun. And to me, it's like, I, once I understood that that's what I wanted and I kept my expectations of, I just want to have a good time, the fear of not being accepted or being you know, uh, ostracized, made fun of, exiles, like that kind of became less because to me it was all about the moment as opposed to the future. So I guess the best thing is try to just enjoy the moment that you're in. You're in a new place. You're surrounded by new people. Stop worrying about what you're projecting and what you're thinking the reaction will be in the future. Just enjoy the immediate moment and try to try to gauge the energy of the room you're currently in. Because you'll start to see it's like a lot of times like yeah there's sometimes you're going to be right it's like hey there aren't going to be good people in that group but every now and then even if you find one or two people you might find that one person that's actually super cool and you connect with them and it's like hey you made one new friend sometimes that's enough all right I, i'm i'm loving I, i'm loving this positivity this is just this is super awesome i'm like oh my god we're projecting positivity on the internet which means no one's gonna watch this but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <Okay. laughs> Just start an OnlyFans. You'll figure it out from there. I don't know. <laughs> nah, y'all don't want me doing an OnlyFans page. It's like, okay, so hey, today you know, we're going to be talking about Ravenloft. And no, no, yeah, no, that's just not really a thing. Nobody mm. wants to see my dad bod. You don't know that. <laughs> that's true. There, there's, yeah, that, that is very true. That is very true. Um, so yeah, this is like a really big thing now. Um, speaking to that whole elitism okay um <clears throat> real talk masks off i watch a lot of youtube videos i mean a lot and from the older youtubers um not chronologically older but from the people that have been on youtube a lot i hear a lot of apologia 
when it comes to their earlier videos or when they make a mistake like one of my favorite ones uploaded something today and the sound was different and they're like oh god i'm so sorry about the sound and blah 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 <clears throat> and i get that and you see that idea um is something that came along with um the as i brought up earlier elitism in business okay um in our adult lives like it starts all the way back at school all the way back at school where only the students that got the a's and b's were the ones that got the teacher's attention <laughs> um let alone kudos i'm not even talking about like yeah good job they're actually the ones that the teachers paid attention to um in opposed to the c d and f students that needed the help but they never got it because people tended to give up on them um and in business i.e the workplace um hey you're most profitable to the company let me give you more tools to make more money um versus the ones who aren't elite um how can i put it uh there is a movie one of my favorite dramas from the 1980s called glengarry glen ross oh yeah and this whole idea of these are guaranteed house sales and they're only going to the people that sell the most houses. Um, I've never liked that idea. Um, partly because I'm very anti-capitalist um, due to the fact that I don't like the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And I think any system that's set up to reward people who are already ahead of the game is really, really messed up. But that's for a meeting on Tuesday down by the docks. <laughs> Um, we're going to be wearing our trench coats and, you know, wear a mask because of COVID and, and, um, identification, um, <clears throat> you know, cause we might get raided by the FBI or something, but, um, but in all these places where it's like, well, that person is succeeding more, therefore they deserve more attention. They deserve more help. I find lines up with the, with the just world fallacy which is this idea that people who have a lot have a lot because they earned it, you know? So if you know how to play this game really, really well, you've earned your spot with me. Now, normally I would tell those people um, to put it back in the deck, okay? But I'm introducing a new saying, and this one's a lot ruder. It literally is have some corn, okay? For those people, I'm like, just have some corn. Um, based on a phrase I say a lot that I don't say on this channel because I want kids and stuff to watch, but just have some corn. Um, it, it's really a thing because, um, those people who have that idea of, you know, we only allow experts here. It's like, who are you? Like, who, who, who are you? Like, what makes you so far above everyone else? And this is the mind frame that I have. I mean, fact I've been reading comics and playing role-playing games longer than most people on YouTube have been alive. Does that mean that they don't have the right to talk to me about what they like? Absolutely not. You know, the time you've spent on this earth is only one piece of the opportunities that you may or may not have been exposed to to learn things and to have certain experiences. You know, I'm 44 years old. I've never been skiing down a mountain in Europe, you know. Um, I have just as much experience now as I did when I was 11 because I can't get to Europe <laughs> and I don't ski that well anymore. Um, but just because I don't ski down a mountain, should I never, like, or a mountain in Europe, should I never put on the big popsicle sticks on my feet? You know, if I don't know... Um, exactly what issue the phoenix came out in x-men does that mean i don't deserve to spend my money on a movie no i don't i don't believe that um but there's a lot of people who do and with those people i say have some corn and i'll let the baby have their bottle because there are more people like in my heart i don't have the receipts for this i haven't done a study <laughs> um i haven't funded a college to do a study but Statistically speaking, there can only be one absolute best. There's only one greatest guitar player. There's only one greatest D&D player. There's only one greatest comic writer. Um, but everyone fighting for that one position, given how many people are out there doing it, 
um, my personal thing, and I learned this from my music, was I know enough of the things I like to be happy with knowing that stuff. And that's my primary motivation for um, navigating these things. I don't know everything about black history, you know. So with that, I'm like, okay, well, if you know something I don't know, cool. I'll be happy to listen and I'll be happy to engage. Um, I sure as crap don't know a whole lot about Bolivian horticulture, <laughs> you know. But um, does that mean I don't deserve to be in the room with the people who do know? Does that mean I don't deserve a chance to learn? Absolutely not. You know, um, <laughs> sorry, I just noticed Vixen in the chat. Europe doesn't have a monopoly on the mountains. Nope, that's Asia, <laughs> um, you know, and the moon. But actually, no, the moon doesn't have mountains. It has craters, which are opposite mountains. And I've got a degree. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so one of the big things I have to give you guys as a takeaway is if you're not happy with how much you know, learn more. But don't learn more because other people won't accept you. Learn more because you want to know. And there ain't nothing wrong with being curious. And if people give you crap for being curious, well, you can just tell them to put that one back in the deck. You know? Um, talk to me, guys. <laughs> I was just going to say opposite mountains or uh, valleys, but I digress. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, craters. A well, excuse me, God. <laughs> well, actually, no, the kidding. opposite of mountains are valleys. <laughs> yeah. craters a valley is none but a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, All right, I'm referring to the scientists in the room. Uh, <laughs> well, fine, but did you know that the sun is a mass of incandescent gas? So, ha! Ah. A science <laughs> reference. And a deep nerd cut. So there. <laughs> but you were saying, you were saying. But I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, I mean, like, the only way you're ever going to learn anything new is if you do go out there and you immerse yourself into new things. I mean, that's how I got into d and in the first place was actually going out and asking somebody to teach me it in the first place in college. And that's how I got into it in the first place. I mean, had I not done that I don't know where I would be now in my d, &D playing currently um nor my skill level which is still questionable I think at some points um but <laughs> you know it's just a matter of just putting yourself out there and you know actually some immersing yourself in like you know and again ignoring ignoring those gatekeepers because those gatekeepers can really just ignore them they're not they're not the know-all be-all of everything out there they, they are not. So, but if you're around somebody who is really, really passionate, who is willing to like wanting to talk to you and you actually have an interest in something, like go up and talk to that person and have, you know, say, Hey, I'm really curious about learning about whatever, what, like, what do I need to do? And like, hopefully that person isn't going to like, you know, divulge a ton of information in your face, but like, <laughs> will at least give you like a couple stepping stones to like, at least guide you on your journey to like, at least kind of get you to start on figuring out what you want to do. If you, this is something you want to pursue in the future. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We've talked a lot about gatekeepers and every time they start doing that, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't see a pointy hat of gray robes. Because you're sitting up in front of me going, you shall not pass. You can't like Star Wars. And I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah, really. Stop. Um, Alan, what are your thoughts on this? There's always a thing that comes up with elitism that for people that probably still aren't quite clear what it means, replace elitism with real fan. Uh, and how many times have you heard someone saying you're not a real uh, fan if you don't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. how many times have you heard that? Oh, you're not a real fan, true fan, if you don't know this or you don't know that. Oh, hey, you don't know this line from a Legend of Zelda game. You're not a real fan. I grew up with that series. I Greg Green, for God's sake, like, <laughs> like all the I time. My way, all the time. I know my way around the Legend of Zelda franchise. Yeah, I didn't play every single one, but I dare someone to come at me with a question that I wouldn't immediately be able to answer because I know my way around it. But if somebody else, so what is Link's shoe size? 
because like, he kind of, he's a child for most of it, so probably <laughs> about five or six. But he also wears like uh, those uh, sa- not sandals. I don't know how to describe. It. Like they're just they're not really shoes. They're like leather. It's just a leather bag. I've been a hoisted on my own petard. I forgot I was talking to a cobbler son. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Got you twice. I'm um, like, yeah. Well, let me ask an obscure piece of information. Well, actually, he's probably wearing this. I'm like, oh crap, that's in your wheelhouse. <laughs> Fall into your own pit. It also depends Thanks. on which Zelda game we're talking about. He changes, he changes his clothes, or which time. At the start of his Zelda game, he wears sandals. Uh, but my point is, it's like oh, I'm not no. any better than somebody that just played Breath of the Wild, and that's the only Zelda game they've ever played. Like, I'll, I'll tell them, it's like you know, people come, oh, Breath of the Wild is the best one. I'll be like. It's it, like there are better Zelda games. Let me show you the ones. But if they're there, be like, you're not a fan. You are a fan. You got involved in Breath of the Wild, the most recent one, most one of the probably the most popular one in the last decade. But there are better games. Here's the entire history of this franchise. But the idea that's like I would say something to stop something from like the idea of just like that I would stop someone from enjoying Wind Waker or Ocarina of Time because I was an asshole that said Breath of the Wild isn't a real Zelda game. You don't know what you're talking about? Like, no. Those are some of the greatest games of all time. I would never want to do that to somebody. But there are people out there that'll look at something like this and go, yeah, no, you, you know, you only like this. You like you only like the most popular thing. Therefore, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, maybe they don't know how to know what they're talking about. You're stopping them from doing so by giving them a negative reaction. It's like the, a band that comes out and, and the, this person only knows their most popular song. It's like, well, yeah, because that's probably where they heard it from a TV show or a radio or whatever. You telling them that they're not a fan because they only know two songs is now going to put a negative connotation on the fact that they only know two songs. And maybe they'll go out and listen to the whole repertoire, or maybe you just completely lost somebody that could have enjoyed it if you actually showed them the discography or the movies or the video games that you claim to be a fan of. Like, how are you a fan of something? And your first thought is, oh, new person? Hey, join the fandom. Be a part of the mold or, or the blog. Right. Yeah, that's you know, the first thing um, I, I agree with you, except I find myself doing that very same thing with the Pesh mode. I'm like, uh, nobody really likes the Pesh mode. They just Look, like, I like that one song. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows that one song. <laughs> you know, well, most people gonna... only knew one album back in the 90s. But, mm. you know, that that's about it. I'm like, no, nah, you like Violator. You're not really a Depeche mode. <laughs> like I'm not a Boingo fan. Oh, I just music know fans Dead are Man's out part, there with the you know? worst. <laughs> <laughs> we are. I, I, don't, don't, don't let me in there with that. I will. Please, don't <laughs> <shush>. <laughs> No, I'm uh, no, but seriously, to all music fans out there, look, I am a big Rush fan. Okay, and I will say that Rush fans are awesome. Um, but yeah, as soon as it comes down to army, then things get pretty bad. And yeah, I've been a member of the Kiss Army since '79, and the Tool Army since '91. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's a real thing. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, um, being in a place where being the new person is actually um in there with being welcomed. That's huge. Okay, that that is really huge um because when a person is welcomed um the the tribe the group the squad is immediately warmer you know um when i talk about my mentors um you know when i talk about my mentor i will say that when i first started watching it i started watching this channel called spill.com don't look for it it's not there anymore and some people were like oh you're starting a channel where you talk to people and you play games and you and you do movie reviews you should check this out because you're a black guy and you're doing that too and um and i started watching and i'm like man these guys make fun of everything and i'm tired of being laughed at because i've been laughed at my whole life for just about everything um, I make a joke about my family where they're like, ah, <laughs> you like this girl <laughs> while well, I was in the fifth grade. And it's like, ah, ah, you like a girl, you like a girl, you like a girl. Three weeks later, okay, son, we're kind of concerned on whether or not you might be a homosexual. I'm like, if I was, why wouldn't I be? You've been making fun of me for like, for being heterosexual, you know? So I, I, I have a personal thing against being made fun of most of the time. Um, I used to meet it with anger, aggression, and sometimes arson, but, um, um, I, I 
totally forgot where I was going down <laughs> with that with that particular rant. <laughs> um, I was gonna say when in doubt arson, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that <laughs> yeah, no, that no, place. no, not arson. <laughs> You know, uh, it was a different time and everybody was doing it. It was the April of 92. Um, but when it comes down, you know, I will. Oh, yeah, spill. So I'm listening mm -hmm. to him and I actually grew with thicker skin about being made fun of because I'm like, oh, it's like a celebrity roast, you know. Um, and this is a really big thing on that. Hey, what's going on? Um, sad, strange little man. Um, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, welcome. I've been wondering where you've been. Um yeah these guys make fun of everyone and i remember the first time i called in and i'm like i'm a new fan but i'm a fifth time caller and they're like uh -huh. wait you're black what you, you what you're a black dude uh, and i'm like yes yes i'm a black guy i'm a black guy with a nasally voice and a loud on a big vocabulary and i use words like loquacious when describing the way that i speak um but when i got to know them and i got to know the fan base I'm like, these are some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. And it's been a very welcoming, um, been a very welcoming community. Um, and the spin-off communities like the Illuminati and 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 uh the Metropolis and you know, the places that they can find my guests online. This is me switching to you. <laughs> um Okay, well, that was not a good segue, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm learning. You were, I was so lost in your in your He's loquacious. Like, like, <laughs> as I look no. up the word, <laughs> you really had to look up loquacious. Wow. Of course I did. <laughs> and I like to think I'm a pretty smart guy, but I'm like loquacious, like really, really crappy movie that came out last year. Oh wait, no, that was something else. Oh I my pay God. my mortgage with one dollar words. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so seriously speaking, um, I guess the big thing to take away from today's show, the biggest thing is that it's understandable if you're afraid of not fitting in. It's understandable if you're not if you're afraid of not being one of the guys, especially because we have the internet, which is my favorite invention since the condom. Um being a repository of all documented human knowledge throughout all of history. However, it's also the thing that allows us to communicate with anyone on earth at any time. Um, and that means everyone has a voice and not all voices are kind. But take heart, because there's a lot of kind voices out there that are welcoming. Um, it's just, it's a lot like trying to look up how to do anything on reddit you're gonna have to go through nine pages of okay that's not gonna work that's not gonna work that's not gonna work you can't use a wrench like that um before you actually get to what you want um uh, am i wrong <laughs> i mean there'll be about three of those pages of people going it didn't work for me which is the most useless comment i think i can ever think of <laughs> yeah we know it didn't work for you that's why you're here <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> yeah um hang on i gotta I, I gotta um i gotta do a reply here wait i can do so online it is uh loquacious is not better than obsequious thank you very much red dame bento <laughs> stop adding yeah. words with ious at the end <laughs> i just feel very fancy all of a sudden oh yeah that's well. like we're just going on a, we're just going who can make, make the most obscure long words that people should probably know <laughs> 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 yeah well i can say i can definitely say listen to a lot of they might be giants and you might learn the proper use of the word myriad or you know watch certain movies with winona Ryder and just means later lot. just use smaller words it doesn't make <laughs> you sound any less smart uh no i got my butt kicked by my mom and made to read the dictionary when i was 10 years old that beating will not be in vain um <laughs> All right, just real talk though. I love the crap out of my mom. I really did. I, I, I really did. I really do. Okay. And, you know, um, but I do make fun. I do make fun because I had a bizarre childhood. Really bizarre. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, take heart because there are good people out there. Um, most of them are here at backinthedeck.com and twitch.tv slash bid underscore p. Um, or at least they will be. We're building. We're building our own bid P army. 
Oh wait, no, no, not army, because that was terrible. Um, armies are terrible. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't stick the army after you. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but seriously, you know, know your truth, take heart, and know that there are people out there just like you that are looking for somewhere to belong, that are just new to stuff, and of course, no one on this earth, to my um, academic knowledge my occult knowledge and my arcane knowledge is born with a PhD in everything. Even Reed Richards went to school. Okay. So no one is born an expert. Matter of fact, the only thing that we're born experts in is screaming and pooping. That's it. That's all. We even need to be smacked on the butt before we can breathe. All right. That's a real thing. So everybody's got to learn something from somewhere. And when someone when someone gives you crap for not knowing something, um, understand in your heart that they have an expectation of you to either be what they think you are versus what you know you are, or they're doing, um, God, I hate insulting boomers, but the biggest, but they do do this. They have this idea that if they had to do it to get to the point that they're at, then you do too, you know? And that is, incorrect yeah. you know that that's really incorrect um i can tell you quite honestly i would have no friends if i thought the only way i'm going to get a hold of people is if they're willing to ride three hours on a bus and go to a sundown town to get information from places that don't want them there and then they have to fight skinheads and then they have to and i'm like no 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 hey we got a new subscriber awesome oh, nice. awesome Welcome. Thank you. Subscribe, subscribe. All right. Uh, but yeah, um, that's the closest thing. But yeah, if I had those thoughts, I wouldn't have any friends. Hey, to this day, I barely have friends that want to drive 20 minutes to do something that they want to. <laughs> so, you know, I understand that everybody has their own their own things. But much like emotional baggage, we're all looking for people that have matching luggage with ours. And there's a lot more of us out there than you might. Well, not as many as you might think, but a lot more than you might feel there is. You know? Like these guys. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> uh, the idea that, and again, video game background mostly. I, I, love, I played video games since I was a kid. Uh, the idea that it's like uh, old gamers are like, kids don't know the struggle of like dial-up or like component cables or like all of the or like garbage controllers. I'm like, good! I'm glad kids don't have to deal with the crap that we had to deal with when I was a kid. Oh, kids don't know the struggle of blowing into a cartridge. That was not fun. Nobody enjoyed that. Um, Nobody no, likes dial up. I, Nobody I, I liked did. having to pre plug in and plug in your, you know, uh, your video game console on a different TV if you kept having to redo it. Okay. And, and I got to stop you guys. I got to stop you guys right there because I was there, bro. We so was I. loved I was it. Conscious too. You know, we loved it because we didn't have anything better. <laughs> that was the <laughs> best we had. I didn't have the time too, and I still hate it. That's I mean, true. Up, when you grew up and the internet loaded up without having that annoying sound that's burned into my skull, I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, I when mean, HDMI cables came out. I, oh my God, I was like, thank God. Plug it in, plug it out. You know, no, I mean, never going back ever. Yeah, I mean, it's actually funny because, like, when I look at stuff nowadays, I, I look at a lot of things. And I remember TV shows that I watched that were in 480p. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And I see footage of them. And when I was a kid, I used to, like, see news footage from back in the 70s, right? Or the early 70s, like late 60s, early 70s, yeah. when TV first became color for everyone. Um, though I grew up with a black and white TV. But... Um, and I'm like, why does it look so different from what I remember? I do not understand. Um, and I get it now because um, I've lived through the console wars. Like, back in my oh, day, yeah. Coleco was the best that you can get until this Atari 2400 came out. And you got this little box with a stick sitting out the side. And they called it a joystick. And I asked my mom what that meant. And she told me to stay out of grown folks' business. Um, but... Um, all right, fine. Screw you guys. That was funny. Um, no. I laughed. You know. I laughed, damn it. Sure. <laughs> so, I, I, not like I've been hearing that joke since I was 12, but yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, when Nintendo came out and 
We finally got our hands on one because if you think standing in line for Jordans and the new video game console system is new, it's not. Um, but as graphics have gone up and we went from 8 to 16 to 32 to people complaining that the voice isn't synced up on these characters from another dimension that artists created that look a little realer than I do, I get it. <laughs> like, I, 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 I totally get it. Um, but yeah, I'm letting you know way back then we loved it. We're like, oh, well, guess I got a blue on the ding. Look, I'm sorry. I also mm -hmm. grew up during that time uh -huh. and there was nothing more annoying than spending five minutes and just giving up. Or, hey, do you guys remember the Red Ring of Death? Oh, no, I can't buy a PS5. Imagine watching your 360 burst into flames. Hey, have you <laughs> like, never had a... That happened yet. What? Have you never had a cat knock over your Monopoly board? Especially when you uh, were ahead oh. and the thing jumps up on the thing going, Ah, oh, Kaiju attack! Nobody gets boardwalk! That's what we grew up with. <laughs> yeah, but okay. again, like I said, like I grew up, I grew up in, in in the crap with the console wars. I was there. Se Sega does what Nintendo don't, and them going back and forth. That was awesome. But <laughs> it was. Now every video game company has to shake hands and don't worry, Microsoft. We like you. Yeah, Nintendo. Let's be friends. No, insult each other like children. Yeah, that's why you're here for my entertainment. And Sony's in the back going, "That's just like you Xbox people," but that's okay because all that matters <laughs> is getting us through those doors, you know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but again, it's like, like to me, it's like I'm glad that you know the younger generation has a chance to experience the joy of video gaming without going through a lot of the hurdles. They have their, oh, there's new hurdles. There are way brand new hurdles. But I would take <laughs> any hurdles currently that right now. I wish that the only problem I had with video games back when I was a kid was whether or not I had to wait for an update. Not of hey, this game doesn't have a con the controls aren't mapping are on there or i have no idea where to get a memory card from you guys remember <laughs> memory cards i oh legitimately my. never beat raymond to the great escape because my mom would not buy me a memory card so every time that system shut off i had to restart the game from the start i played the opening <sighs> of the game 30 times <laughs> oh my god yeah uh, somebody in the chat just pointing out remember the aladdin game yeah <laughs> games were oh, uh, B, games were bs back hey. then man you know what I'm not going to disagree with you because to this day, I still haven't beaten Mike Tyson's punch out on the NES. Nobody has. You not know. even Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. Oh, no. Uh, my, my fingers are too big. My fingers are too... Oh, yeah. I hit oh. real good. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, y'all remember this? Y'all remember Game Facts? Um, I'm sorry. That was beyond my social class. Like, real talk. We did not have the money to be in that much of a video game culture. Most I had was the money I stole out of my mom's purse to go to the arcade and play Street Fighter. Like that that's real talk. For, you know. For the people that do remember Game Facts, do you remember the existence prior to it when you had no way of figuring out how to play a video game? Where oh. the only hope you had was that your friend down the street that you had to walk to their house actually knew the game existed. Besides <laughs> that, you could never beat games if you didn't know what was going on. That's true. Um, that is very true. Now Along... you just go on Twitch and someone's doing a live playthrough in their underwear. Or go on YouTube and somebody already did it and are going, no, if you go over here and you push A and then you do the hokey pokey, but you do it on the ceiling while listening to <laughs> Blue Oyster Colts Don't Fear the Reaper, you can skip this level. <laughs> you know? uh, good luck. For anyone that's a yeah. Metroid fan, good luck beating Metro Prime 2 without a walkthrough. I dare you. <laughs> you know, oh, but, um... I'm, I'm having flashbacks to this Harry Potter game I used to play that. There's this one level I could not get through because I kept getting caught in this stupid library because i it was just it drove me nuts it took me months to get through this library because i just had, i kept rage quitting and there was a time where there was like no walkthroughs nothing on the internet because the internet didn't have that at that point and this is like early 2000s i like i nearly rage quit the game because i was so done <laughs> that will never beat the game yep. yeah it, that, that, that oh. was gaming back then yeah we got the chat going like riddler trophies in the arkham series would be even oh, more hated if they were started oh, on yeah. that. <laughs> i know. tried the first one the first game arkham asylum i'm like you know what? i tried they're fun they're they're along the path that that's kind of cool second game when it goes to 400 i'm like i am going out of my way to not get any more of these <laughs> well it's funny because a friend of mine that works at a video game company gave me a copy of um the first batman game that was in that format and i'm like huh i can uh nope sorry all right i think i'm gonna paint a miniature now because that was just that's just my wheelhouse <laughs> i've been gone for too long <laughs> you know i can hold a paintbrush but i can't operate a controller unless it's a fighting game i i don't know why um but um it for me hmm? 
It's too complicated for me video games now. I can't. Uh, there was also oh. the fighting game too. I am just way out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, mm -hmm. for some people. I it is like gambling in Vegas for your first time where you just put your money on the table and the nice person takes it away and asks if you want to do it again, you know? <laughs> um. uh, so my nephew, he's about 10, 11, and he's now he's starting to get into video games at roughly the same age I did. And so I basically like, look, I don't play my PS4 here. You can have it. And much like a lot of the other kids, one of the games they played was Fortnite. Well, damn, so aren't you rolling hard? Like, oh, here's yeah, here's my PS4. I don't use this piece of crap. It's all about it's all no, about. It was, I need more room for my 3080 Ti. <laughs> I actually do have one, but it was all the things where it's like I'm watching him play. I'm like, I played a little bit of Warzone. I know my way to run a battle royale, but I never picked up Fortnite. And he's like, Hey, do you want to play? And the first time in my life I ever felt old. Where I was just like, oh, I'm playing the games the kids play, and I had to like, they're and you're TV. getting I... wrecked. <laughs> you were no, <laughs> that, this is the funny part of that story. But one of the things that that uh, the two things that happened in this, we're playing on the TV, and I've been so used to playing on a monitor for like the last 15 years, I've been doing nothing but monitors. So I was having a tough time seeing like the little details. So I had to sit right up to the TV, like I was back in the 90s, as my nieces and nephew are looking at me, going, "How old are you?" And I'm just like, I'm "Only 30, man." <laughs> like old man or the, like in front of the tv it's like yeah i mean i remember those days but and i'm playing the game and i'm trying to get my way through and my nephew goes oh be careful this area this area has a lot of sweats i was like <laughs> what the hell are you talking about i don't know what that means and he goes oh you, wait you know, games you get, get flop sweats <laughs> no like you get tense and you start sweating i'm like oh i don't understand the kids anymore <laughs> like new slang. welcome to it guess what your but, back is going out next but the one thing you that wait. never changes is the one thing that never changes is right triggers to shoot and <laughs> I still won. I still beat them. Video games don't change. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So boy, did we stay on topic on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's cool though. I love these conversations because yeah, I love being Abe Simpson, not gonna lie, because I used to be with it, but then it changed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I didn't know what it was. Ever said. <laughs> it's so true. It, it's so true. You know, I used to look at my mom going, "What? He Man isn't hard to understand. You've got He Man, who's the who is the defender of Eternia, which is the which is the center of the universe, and he has the magic sword that will that will do all this existence." And she's like, "So, um, who's chasing a who's who's chasing a running bird? You know." <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. Is 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 there a skunk trying to get a girlfriend? Because if it's more complex than that, I don't care, son. <laughs> Not that she didn't get it, she just didn't care. And oh my God, do I get it yep. now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, those those are the places that we're at. And so, again, um, for all of you viewers out there, thank you for sticking around um for this next half hour i had a little bit of a fight with uh with with the music because i refuse to let us get played off like we are on an award show okay i'm not down with that i'm tired of it you know um tired of it being like all right you've been on long enough i'm like stop telling me that broadcast gods but i definitely want to thank you guys um for showing up with me today um where can they get uh where can they get a hold of you guys where can they see you give me websites give me give me all the ways that they can get a hold of you without doxing <laughs> already you can follow me all, basically all over the machados if i'm not on a show i'm editing it if you want to hear more random opinions with a lot more cussing check out the chat attack follow me either on twitch or on facebook uh, my name should be i'll post my name in the chat it's super long and complicated but if you follow anyone of anyone here you'll eventually see me somewhere on there so be sure to keep an eye on that my twitter is at birdman allen where i consistently talk crap to ign Daily basis. <laughs> terrible twitter account i don't know why i follow them but it's kind of hilarious how bad they are at the drops wow. all right and jenny where can they find you well you can find me over on facebook my face my, my name is substantially easier hopefully to spell uh follow me on facebook facebook.com slash uh jenny matasek that's jenny with an i m-a-t-a-s-e-k uh mostly i just get tagged in a lot of memes and stuff uh thanks to my boyfriend 
Cedric, I love you. Thank you. Um, um, you can also find me over also on the Metropolis with my podcast, the Newness Podcast. Again, where we talk all things K-pop. As I also show my nerdiest thing, I think I bought nerd currently is a actually cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's a cassette tape. Um, <laughs> Tell me you got the pencil that goes along with it. Y'all older heads, no, y'all know what I'm talking about. Card, but <laughs> you gonna need a pencil. I promise you on that. <laughs> No, I just need to actually play, to actually play it now. Um, but, uh, no, you can also find me over on the news podcast, again, where we talk all things K-pop, uh, current and new releases, uh, currently in the K-pop world, as well as K-pop news with my co-host, Miss Jenny Liano. Uh, I promise new episodes are coming soon. Uh, we are coming back from our hiatus very, very soon. Um, but you can also uh, follow us over on Twitter and on Instagram at Nuna's underscore podcast. Don't forget the underscore. Uh, you can listen to our back catalog of episodes over on the Metropolis Collective on Facebook, or you can listen to our episodes over on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Nuna's podcast. That's all one word. Um, or you can follow me personally over on Twitter and on Instagram at Chaos Bulldog. I am a horrible social media person. I don't tweet or Instagram that much, but I'm trying to get better. So <laughs> trying, trying, trying. It's almost sound like you're an adult with a day job. <laughs> it sounds like it, doesn't it? But Look, you see yell at more people over the internet. <laughs> um, most of the time, it's mostly K-pop memes because that's my life now. So, yeah. I apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for showing up. And I want to give a, a very special thanks uh, to the people in all my chats. Miss Mandy Lewis over on YouTube. Um, Miss um, Dame Red Bento. Clever little vixen holding it down like they always do. Uh, Chaos Bulldog. What's up? Thanks for coming back. Commander Root. What's going on, man? Mm-hmm, ham, good old go with him is there. Hello, Haiti, and welcome. I'm glad that you showed up um, to play with us today. Um, Lily DeWolf, thank you for the subscription. Um, oh, what's going on, P. Mansfield? And of course, um, Sad Strange Little Man, along with who do we have here? Um, Saru Lights, um, Skip Talk, and Vine Constrict. Thank you guys for coming down and hanging out with us um all of this stuff has been so awesome and i'm so happy that you guys have come down if you want to join the conversation that's cool but you can't do it with us you're gonna have to talk with each other but if you have a question for me and all that jazz you can always head over to back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-a-g-d-e-c-k <coughs> You can also reach out to me on Twitter. Believe me, I might get it. Who's to say? At Back in the Deck, along with the Instagram. And if you guys want to see a little more of Lil Saul, um, then you're going to have to go over to our TikTok. Our TikTok. Um, that's at BidP. That's B I D. P-Y, and of course, if you were part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook, then join Deckers on the, on the book. And if you're there, you guys could show us what you're playing. Talk to us about all the stuff that you're building and playing and painting, your cosplay, your K-pop, your movie posters. You know, maybe you want to talk about how is the best James Bond. If you want to talk about that, go talk about it on Deckers on the Book. We will hear you and we will talk to you about that and we will argue with you and all that jazz. If you want to keep us alive, then all you got to do is head over to, oh, wait, sorry about that. I pushed the wrong button. All you got to do is head over to <coughs> patreon.com slash B-I-D underscore P and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. You can help keep our lights on um, and really help us out. We've got so many tiers with so many prizes and I'm telling you our physical incentives for doing stuff like this are huge okay I'm not joking um you get early access to a lot of the videos patreon only videos specifically featuring Lil Saul the puppet um you also get quizzes and we hang out that's actually the major place where you can like play video games with me if I play a video game and you can be like, you suck, you suck so hard. Why do you suck so hard? And when I do those things, I only interact with the people who are patrons and that's a really big thing on that one. And of 
course, um, we give away things like keychains and pop figures of Lil Sol himself. We even have wearable masks that we make here in-house and all that stuff. And of course, once you hit the royalty tier, which are queens, kings, and aces, you get a shout out at every show, like our queen, or yeah, like our queen, Shannon Boom Boom Lay, our queen, Shaylee Watson, and our queen, Laura Holton. So thank you guys for keeping us open, keeping us out there. And remember, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget. You tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time, probably tomorrow, on the dark side of the room.